Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, far be it for me to um, try to uh, fan the flames of a controversy a little bit, but there was a pretty interesting Twitter discussion going on that uh, happened uh, probably when you're seeing this video. It's probably been about a week or two um, uh, that I thought I would uh, sort of uh, dip my toes into. So uh, you can see here what we're talking about. We have um, discussion online about Harold Baines and whether he qualifies for the Hall of Fame. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I really don't care. Um, I know that there are a lot of people who put some sort of strange level of importance on which players do and do not belong in the Hall of Fame. This has always struck me as a really kind of inane type of uh, discussion to uh, have. I do know that one of the reasons why we tend to use statistics like WAR is so that people can uh, try to use uh, different uh, or similar means of comparison for these types of players, right? I understand this, but I'm going to tell you that sometimes WAR gives us some really strange um, uh, results, and we can see that right here. So Baines comes out with a 38.8 WAR in his career, despite having really relatively a good time of it offensively, 121 OPS plus for those of you who um, insist upon uh, adjusting for um, park effects and for uh, uh, era effects and for all of the other um, wonderful things that um, are now a uh, sort of in that grab bag of things that have to be present whenever we talk about baseball statistics. The interesting thing is when we compare Harold Baines here with Gene Tennis, Tennis gets almost nine more war in his career despite playing fewer years. 15 years to Baines is 22, and despite not having a reputation as a great hitter. And, I mean, when you look at the raw statistics, it doesn't necessarily look so great. OPS Plus does give him a little bit better, though, 136 rating as opposed to, what did we say this was here, 121. Fairly significant difference, I would say. But remember that WAR is a cumulative counting statistic and is not one of these, you know, sort of, uh, you know, how did you do in, in terms of uh, your average of this and your average of that over time. It was a very interesting uh, discussion. So we talk about tennis with his 388 on-base percentage. Interesting how back in the days when uh, nobody cared about on-base percentage, you did have guys who would take a lot of walks and who had good on-base percentage, almost like, uh, anyway, we won't go too far down that uh, uh, field of logic other than, than to say that it's, I mean, it's it's almost like baseball players actually kind of know how to play baseball and don't need the statisticians to tell them what they should and should not be doing. Um, Harold Baines, um, in contrast, had a 356 on base percentage, but the slugging percentage for Baines is a bit better, 465 compared to uh, 429. Now we can go through and we can adjust for error, which was the uh, source of much controversy and much flaming on Twitter in a, a discussion that I really would not recommend uh, spending too much time reading because it was a big headache. The trick about this, though, and the thing that a lot of my uh, sabermetrican friends um, tend to miss out on is the reason for this war is not the difference between a 136 OPS plus and a 121 OPS plus. That's what you think is going on. That's not really what's going on. The reason for this comes all the way down here when we go over to our favorite category, standard feeling. So if we go look at, uh, actually, we can go look here at player value because for whatever reason, Baseball Reference puts this here. All right, when we go look here at the player value for Gene Tennis, we see his R field is what, minus eight? Um, Harold Baines had a player value here of uh, what, um, minus 12, right? So it's comparable, right? Um, I mean, you know, Baines is uh, probably not uh, necessarily a superstar right fielder and played in uh, as the designated hitter for a lot of his career. Um, and uh, tennis also, before he went to the National League, did have time playing as a designated hitter um, a little bit off and on. But remember, this is the A's of uh, Charlie Finley. And so uh, there was probably a lot of weird shenanigans going on there. I'm not the expert of this. He played catcher for a little while, played with some first base and so on and so forth. Um, the problem that we have here, though, is that that's not really what tells the picture, right? Because if you just look at that in raw terms, they look very, very uh, f uh, similar. No, the problem comes with the war positional um, scarcity, the positional adjustment that is made, where Baines loses 190 um, runs. I'm assuming that is what that calculates, and tennis gains another 24. That's what's really going on. It's the positional adjustment. And here we have the positional adjustment explanation on fan graphs. Now, my apologies in advance. I don't know if this is actually the like most recent explanation for this or not, right? But the explanation here as I read this, and I'll put, you, I'll put a link down below for you, is that um, the problem that we have is that defense is measured using either ultimate zone rating or defensive run saved. Remember, these are two measurements that are black box measurements. We don't know how they are created. And they are, those are, those are it's telling us they're created by comparing a player to average performance at his position, right? Now, that's a problem already, right? We know that 
from a theoretical standpoint, this is an issue because you're looking at how players do compared to average players, not compared to replacement level players, which is what WAR is supposed to be measuring. The other problem is that you're only measuring shortstops against shortstops or left fielders against left fielders. And so the way that WAR tries to deal with this is it arbitrarily creates a full season adjustment based on the positions that the players play at. So if you happen to be in right field, left field, or first base, you end up losing runs automatically. And if you're a DH, you lose a huge amount of runs because you don't do anything on defense. There's a huge question as to what the logic is behind taking runs away for designated hitters. I don't see an explanation here, right? Yeah, there's a lot of room to disagree on the precise decimals. And if you invite to do so, if you want to do so, I invite you to come up with a more accurate rendering of the numbers, right? I'm going to tell you this. My opinion is that this whole thing is a bunch of garbage, right? Where did the numbers come from? How was how were they how were they calculated? Why are we using this? And particularly, my question is, what is the theoretical uh, value of doing this? I'll tell you something that's a little bit odd, right? These positions that are positive: catcher, second base, shortstop, and third base are all positions that only right-handed players can play. If you don't know that, you're probably a sabermetrican. Um, but those who played baseball, I know this being left-handed myself, uh, those who play baseball know that if you are left-handed, you're never going to play catcher. That doesn't happen. And in fact, you never see left-handed players actually play the position at second, short, or third. It doesn't happen. If you're left-handed, you play the infield, you're going to play at first base. I don't care what season you look at, you're going to discover that that is the case. That's just the way that it is. And if not, you'll play in the outfield, right? That's what this really is, to be honest with you. This is sort of an anti-left-handed player bias, right? Because these are the positions where your left-handed hitters, who might have a slight advantage because they're mostly facing right-handed pitching, right? These are the positions where they're most likely to be found, and also designated hitter, right? Again, where is the actual theory? Where is the actual thought that went into this? I don't know, but I'm going to tell you that when you're comparing Harold Baines with Gene Tennis, if we're going to look instead at um, the offensive war rating, right, which is right here, um, I don't know, 455, right? What is this here? 410. I would say that's probably a little bit closer to what um, the uh, actual comparison would be, right? 47 per season for tennis, 23 per season for Baines. I mean, we can go ahead and go for that. But the difference in a career of a war of almost nine uh, for a player, plus nine war for a player who played in seven fewer seasons is, I mean, at least for me, this doesn't pass the smell test. And the reason why is almost entirely because of this positional adjustment. Now, I'm going to tell you this. The thing that drives me nuts about this, the thing that I just cannot get back past is how much of these um, uh, advanced metrics are just completely arbitrary. They're just something that somebody came up with to come up with a number. And it's being def defended as if this were the gospel truth and that this is you know the thing that every sane and intelligent person believes in. That's the problem that I have with this, right? This is not scientific at all. Most of the people who I have spoken with about this cannot define it and cannot explain why it works this way in any sort of logical means, any sort of log logical measure or any sort of logical way. That's the problem that we have with uh, looking into war and looking into positional adjustments. Frankly, I don't really see the need for it. I'm going to put it to you this way, right? You need to have a right fielder. You need to have a left fielder, right? You're not going to be able to win a game if you have three shortstops, right? I know that it's normal for shortstops to hit a little bit worse than some of your outfielders, and I'm telling you the reason why is probably because of the platoon advantages the left-handed batters have because you're comparing positions where there are left-handed batters to positions where there are none. This should be obvious. It should be absolutely obvious. Just a glance at the statistics should tell you this. But instead, we choose to live in fantasy world where we throw a bunch of random, miraculous numbers at each other and try to explain away you know, why this is this way and why that is that way. Anyway, that's my opinion. I know many of you will probably disagree with me, and I welcome all of your um, angry and um, insightful comments. Uh, but it's something that somebody needs to say, and no one else is going to say it. I'll do it. Talk to you later. Bye.